Hello everybody and welcome to another Twilight Zone review. Today it is Season 5, Episode 10. The 7th is made up of Phantoms, written by Rod Serling and starring Ron Foster as Sergeant Connors, Randy Boone as Private McCluskey, and Warren Oates as Corporal Langford. And this episode is kind of a mixed bag, but I think ultimately it doesn't really succeed. The premise is fairly interesting, it's decent, but I don't think the execution of the episode is particularly good. And the ending just comes off as strange and kind of pointless, and I'll tell you what I mean as I go through the episode. So we start with three soldiers uh, during the time period, the Battle of Little Bighorn, I believe, and they're talking about Custer, and one of them gets shot. So then we go to the present, which is basically a current timeline, and we get our three main characters. They're all soldiers, and they're in some kind of war games, and I guess they were stationed in a location close by. And we find out that they would wind up being in the same location as the first scene that we saw with the other three men, and that they will be living out scenes from the Battle of Little Bighorn as we go, which is decent in theory, but like I said, the execution's kind of shaky. So Sergeant Connors, who is kind of in charge of this group, tells the story of Custer's last stand, and we get some needed information historically, and this is a very long opening, probably one of the longer ones in the show. And at this point, before we cut to the opening narration, they also hear some noises which sound like Indians, they also find a teepee, Things like that. So it's a decent setup for the episode. So then we get a scene where Connors visits the captain and him and his squad get reprimanded because they were late. They weren't where they were supposed to be. And he tries to explain, you know, we heard these noises. We found a teepee. So we decided to investigate. And the captain dismisses this as some kind of excuse, which makes sense because why wouldn't he? It's a pretty far out story. So the three men are out again. And Connors and McCluskey keep telling the story, which they seem to conveniently know a lot about. I'm just saying why they know so much about Custer's Last Stand, I have no idea. But I'll just go with it. And Langford isn't really believing uh, the other two. He thinks they might be kind of crazy. And this is interrupted when they hear a horse and McCluskey fires. And we do see a horse with no rider, which is about the best visual we get in this episode, although it was a bit confusing, I have to say, as to exactly what happened here. So at this point, Connor says we're following the same exact trail as Custer did. How exactly did he come to this conclusion? It's a little shaky, but I'll go with it. So Connor says the next thing that should happen chronologically would be there'll be some kind of massacre. And he said, we'll either have to join in or we'll have to stop it. So that's still kind of interesting enough. This episode goes back and forth between being interesting and being kind of uh, just not that interesting, I guess I would say. So at this point, we get the next scene, and the captain once again uh, radios them, and he's talking to McCluskey and then Connors, and the captain tells them they better come back immediately or they're going to be in big trouble. At this point, the transmission breaks off, so the captain sends some men out to go look for them and bring them back. So... The three men are still talking, and at this point, Langford's still not buying it. He says this must all be an illusion, and the other two men are still believing it, and Connors gives an explanation. He says we should see a village up ahead soon. So Langford says, no way. He says, I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. I'm going back until he sees the village. So now he's kind of believing. In the meantime, McCluskey goes to investigate, and he gets shot in the back with an arrow, but he gets wounded, not killed. At first, I thought he might have been dead here, but he winds up surviving. Again, kind of a confusing scene. And then we get this sloppy scene, in my opinion, where the captain's man reports back to him, says all we found was a tank and a letter. Just the way this was cut in and edited in, it seemed to break up the flow of the episode, and I didn't really care for it. But it's kind of important information, as we'll see at the end here. So the three men are still going, and at this point, this is getting a little long, and this is mostly because we're getting all exposition and explanation, but we're not really seeing any of Custer's men, any Indians, or any battle take place. They probably didn't have the budget to do this, but it just doesn't work to have it all be just explanation with no visuals to go with it, in, in my opinion. So, as I said, the three men are still going, and it winds up that they hear the noises, and we know the battle is imminent, and they get ready, and they go into battle, and it just cuts out. We don't see anything. It just fades out, and we'll find out what happens. We have the last scene, and we go to the Custer Battlefield Monument, and 
There's three names on it, and of course, it is the names of our three main characters. So we find out that they passed away at this battle, and the captain says, too bad they didn't bring the tank, it might have made a difference. Now, some of my issues here, like I said, although the premise is interesting, we never really get to see anything happen. And if it turns out that the three men died here, they didn't really change anything. Nothing happened. So all that happened is their three names were added to the list. Isn't that kind of pointless? It didn't really affect anything. It just made three more casualties. So what's the point? Maybe if they would have changed history or there would have been something else thought-provoking about this, it would have worked. So what's the message of this episode? Bring a tank into battle and you might win. Like, I just don't really get the overall point of this, in my opinion. Others may find it more interesting, but overall I consider the seventh is made up of phantoms, a missed opportunity, and I give it a two out of five. It's not terrible. The idea is okay, and there's some interesting elements, but the presentation and the meaning of it just don't relate to me. It doesn't work for me. So, two out of five for the seventh is made up of phantoms, and as always, thanks for watching.